you might be getting cheated at the start of the game and not even know it. Hey everyone, it's Yishan here. Just a couple of things before we get into the video. Number one, if you enjoy the content, do please consider subscribing. It helps out a lot. And number two, I've got a couple of affiliate links, free ways to support the channel. Number one is my TCG player link. If you shop there, I get some of the money you send on the website. It costs you nothing extra. Number two is my Your Playmat affiliate link. They make custom sleeves and mats. This is a custom sleeve right here. Check them out. If you use that affiliate link, you get 10% off. Without further ado, guys, let's get right into the video. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be about the dice roll. That's right, the dice roll, the thing that happens at the beginning of almost every Yu-Gi-Oh game where you sit across from your opponent and you sort of ask each other, high roll, yeah, that, that's a thing we do, right? And you guys roll a dice, whoever gets the higher roll goes first. Now, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, the dice roll matters very, very much. This is actually backed up statistically. There are plenty of videos. Uh, one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh YouTubers, Hakuna Madata, he has a lot of videos where he breaks down dueling book metas, and you can watch them. I'll link them in the description below, where clearly decks that are designed to go first when they win the dice roll win a much larger share of their games than 50%, right? So the dice roll is extremely important. It's also one of the easiest things you can cheat in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh. For example, stacking, um, you know, in remote duels may be easier, but much harder in real life. The dice roll though is actually easier to cheat, right? You can not roll hard enough, right? You know, you, you always wanna make sure your opponent is rolling the dice hard enough, right? You can even like rig your dice, like remote duels, that's a huge issue. Like you can literally like bake your dice in an oven and when you roll it, you can roll like double sixes way more often than you should. Like that's a really, really big problem in remote duels. And so if you're wondering why am I losing so many dice rolls today? Well, I'm not, most people probably aren't cheaters, but I would imagine that some people have tried to rig their dice roll in the past because it is such an influential advantage in the game. Now, there are a lot of problems with dice rolling, right? And and my point in this video, which I'm going to convince you of, is that even if people aren't cheating, dice rolling is still a bad method of deciding who goes first, right? Because let's say I roll a dice and I roll one off the table on accident, right? Oh my gosh, do I, do I roll that one again? If I'm rolling two dice, do I keep the one on the table? Do I keep the one off the table? You know, it's all, a, it's all a big mess, right? What if the one on the table is a six? Well, obviously I want to keep the one I rolled on the table, but then if my opponent is like, well, no, 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 you have to reroll both of them because you rolled it off the table. It's just a huge mess, right? There's, there's no reason going first should be that difficult, right? Also, you can tie in this method of going first. If we roll the same number, we have to roll again. And while it's not a huge waste of time, it sort of is a waste of time. Although I will admit it's a little bit exciting when you tie the dice roll with your opponent and have to roll again, but it's, it is sort of a waste of time. And as we transition back to, um, you know, normal duels, um, you, you know, 40 minute rounds maybe, which I hope they make them 50, but probably they're gonna be 40 for the foreseeable future, you will want as much time as you can get, right? Uh, you know, some people have their lucky dice and like, oh, this dice rolls better for me, which by the way, I know that's probably superstition, but if that is true, that is illegal, right? That is not a random dice. Your dice should be rolling one, one sixth of the time, two, two, uh, another sixth of the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my point is, and that's what I wanna convince you of and convince any rational person of, is that dice rolling is filled with problems, right? It's easy to cheat. And even if you are not trying to cheat the dice roll, it's still filled with problems, right? It's just filled with awkward moments, um, ties, and it's just not overall a very good way of going first. And so if you wanna protect yourself from cheating, from bad methods of going first, you know, if you don't wanna lose all eight of your dice rolls again at a regional, well, at least you can try my method of deciding going who goes first. And you can know that it was at least a real 50-50 and that you weren't getting cheated. I think that's really the main reason why I like this method so much is because I will have much higher confidence that I'm not getting cheated. Like, it just feels bad if you lose it. Like, oh, is my opponent a cheater? Like, they're probably not a cheater, but I'd rather just know off the bat that they're not a cheater, right? That, that would make my life much easier. And it would just, you know, it would make the mental aspect of the game much easier to swallow. You'd be like, okay, I actually lost to RNG instead of I got cheated, right? So what is my solution? 
my solution is actually very simple. We're going to play a game of rock, paper, scissors. Now, we're not going to go rock, paper, scissors, shoot, because again, there are many, many ways to cheat the rock, paper, scissors. She's like, oh, what if he goes on rock and, and he other guy goes on shoot? You know, okay, he, he went first, he went second, you know, not a great way to decide who goes first. Now, I do want to mention that, that you can use any method of determining who goes first. You don't have to use a dice roll because that is what it says in the Konami rulebook. I just want to point that out. Any random method is acceptable as long as both players agree. Now, my method is to use rock, paper, scissors, but I would like to use three cards, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a card represent rock. In this case, it'll be Nibiru. Now, when you take this to a real tournament, you probably don't want to use Nibiru because that's a real card. You want to use like a token. For uh, scissors, I've just got an Insector Gigamantis here that can, that's yeah, got some blades on it. So he's going to represent scissors. And then I've got a nice sort of blank white card, Oasis of the Dragon Souls. This one is going to represent paper. And so what I'm going to do is at the start of the game, I'm going to mix these up, right? Now, it's important that whoever mixes these up chooses first okay so i'm going to choose a card first and the reason for that is i don't want my opponent you know to think that like i know where all the cards are right because i mix them up so i can sort of depending on what you pick i can pick second and pick the counter to, to, to rock or paper or scissors or whatever you pick so i'm going to choose this card right here and you're going to choose one of these two cards so if you choose the card on my right you would have chosen this one which would be rock and then I get to reveal my card, which would be scissors, rock beats scissors, you win, right? So you get to go first, lucky you, right? So that's sort of how this would work. And, and so that's, that's all it is. It's really, really hard to cheat, right? Because the person that mixes up the cards has to choose first, right? If someone still cheats this somehow, right? If someone still cheats this somehow, then honestly, the dice roll is the last thing we should be worried about. They can probably stack any card they want to the top of the deck, right? This is some crazy sleight of hand if your opponent can cheat you like this. And I just think, one, with this solution, there's no ties, right? No ties, not, none at all, right? There's no awkward, oh, I rolled it off the table or, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, there's no much harder to cheat, right? There's no, like, you, you just can be confident that you have a fair method of deciding who was going first, who was going second, or I guess who gets that right. Right, so that is my point. Now, I'm gonna offer a more realistic solution for you folks out there because Yu-Gi-Oh players are pretty set in their ways and they probably will not want to switch to a new method of deciding going first. People love their high roll, right? They love their high roll. I'm not sure what why Yu-Gi-Oh players are so obsessed with it. Maybe it's exciting, maybe people love rolling dice. I don't know what it is but people love their high roll so if you're worried about getting cheated my advice to you is to ask for a low roll okay and what that means is i want to take the whoever rolls the lowest number wins and you know if most people are cheating they're probably cheating they're, they're practicing to roll higher they have a dice that rolls higher more often just ask for a low roll if your opponent is sketched out about doing a low roll either means they're very irrational very superstitious or they're cheaters so <laughs> That is that, guys. Um, that is my solution. Let me know what you guys think of it. Do you guys have another way of deciding goes first? Is there a better way that I haven't thought of? I think my way is probably the best. What do you think? Do you think dice rolling is irrational? Or if for some reason, do you like dice rolling? Or is there is there a reason for it? Let me know in the comments below, guys. This is sort of one of my hot takes for the year. And I sort of wanted to get this video out, uh, this idea off my chest for a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, and I hope to see you guys all in my next video.